Mate, what's your question? My question is, what are the signs that your business is at the stage where you can hire more staff? And is there anything you can recommend having in place before you start hiring extra staff? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, it's the ultimate juggle, right, is, is when can you afford it? You know, the irony is, is that you can't afford not to. Um, you know, to build a great business, you have to put those people around you. Uh, in my experience, you should make the jump for staff when you can afford 75% of their wages, okay? If, 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 if you're at 50% of their wages that you can currently afford, it's too risky for me because, you know, you're probably letting them go in, in three weeks if it doesn't work out. If you can afford 100% of their wages, you've probably waited too long. So um, basically, we want a scenario whereby you make the jump to employ them um, when it hurts. Because what happens is the, the pain of it hurting should drive you to, because it, it frees up your time, right? Having somebody around you frees up your time. So the pain of having them means that you deploy the time you just gained into more strategic activities. So instead of you being on the tools, for example, let's say you employ someone and you get back 10 hours a week, you redeploy those 10 hours into more marketing, strategic alliances, whatever, whatever, whatever. And what that does is that's what shores up your future business because you're doing the work that matters. Okay, so, so it, it's, a, it's about finding that balance of when do you jump, but you always have to jump early. You always employ before you can truly afford to, and that's what gives you the pressure, the healthy pressure, to go back and do the work that matters. If, if a scenario happens where you employ someone and they don't free up your time, all you've done is add an overhead, and that's what we don't want, right? That person right. needs to be able to increase your output, okay? Um, so... If they're a person that's on the tools and you're with them on the tools, that's fine. But you need to find some time in your week where you can pull away from the tools and go and be, you know, go into networking events, setting up strategic alliances, building your campaigns out, whatever, whatever, whatever that you need to do to grow your business. Okay, so you've got to jump. What do you need to have in place? Well, first of all, you need a position description. Okay, so most people don't bother with this, especially on, on like higher number one, two or three, when they kind of need people that are all hands on. Um, they generally don't do this, but you actually should take the time to document a position description um, with KPIs, key performance indicators. What are the five to seven metrics that you're gonna measure this person against? You want them before they start, right? Because you know, ultimately, if you try and work those out over time, then that doesn't usually work. Before they start, you'd be like, here's the five things, and they need to be a number, they need to be measurable, they need to be clear. So, that's what, so you've got to make sure you have your position descriptions and your KPIs, the other thing I would make sure you have is an induction process, right? So before they start with you on day one, I would create three sheets of paper. Sheet number one is everything I'm gonna teach you on day one of your job. Day, the second sheet is everything I'm gonna teach you by the end of week one on your job. The third sheet is everything you know, you've gotta learn by the end of month one of your job. And basically they're just a whole list of things and you both sign it off, okay? So when you've taught them something, when you showed them how to do a job, raise an invoice, whatever it is, you know, whatever, you know, clean out the car, purchase orders, whatever the task is, when you've showed them, they sign it, you sign it, and then they're done, okay? If you create that, it does two things. It gets you a better staff member, because they're up to speed faster. It also lets them know that you're a structured, systemized organization, and that's when people do their best work. 